What's the equivalency between kilograms and ounces? Kilograms and ounces. So that was a little bit of a trick question. Let's talk about that a little bit more. So if you look at the table here, they don't tell you directly how to relate kilograms and ounces, right? They don't tell you directly how to relate them. But they did say that one pound is 0.4539 kilograms, and they also said that one pound is 16 ounces. So that's the closest we got. So here's what they had in that back cover. But doesn't that really mean that 16, if 16 ounces equals a pound, and this many kilograms equals a pound, doesn't mean that this equals this. Well, that's the equivalency, right? Remember that an equivalency is just when two things are equal to each other. So I should say that 16 ounces is equal to how many kilograms? So how many kilograms in 16 ounces? A equals B equals C. And now let's say that I tell you that A is 10. What would B be? If A is 10, so it's 10 times 10 to the power of 10. That's right. And what would C be? A equals 16 ounces. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I wasn't talking about this particular example anymore. I, I was trying to make up a new little simpler example to, to help us understand these. So that the point I'm making is, um, okay, so let's forget about this example for a second. So here we've told that A equals B and A equals C. So if A is 10 and B is 10, what would C be? That's right. Doesn't that mean that B equals C? Isn't this just a way of telling us that B equals C? B equals C, right? So, how many kilograms, uh, if one pound is 0.4539 kilograms, and one pound is 16 ounces, how many kilograms are equal to 16 ounces? We have two pounds. Let's see. Well, it's actually simpler than that. D d doesn't this tell us that these two are equal? These two are equal. According to these, yes, these are equal. So, shouldn't I say... Yeah, we don't need to do any calculations. Right. So all I'm saying is that if we say if B is equal to A and B is equal to C, doesn't that also mean that B equals C? And that's the point. They just didn't say that to save space. They don't have to say all of those separate things since they said these two things are equal to this, they're equal to each other. All right. So that means there's an extra equivalency that we might not have noticed at the beginning. There's an extra equivalency. So they did tell us how to go between kilograms and ounces. Now, this might have been confusing to you because it didn't involve the number one. Every single equivalency we've used so far had the number one, but there's no rule of the universe that says that equivalencies have to have the number one. You don't need to have the number one on one of the sides, and this is an equivalency that doesn't have the number one on either side, but it's still a perfectly good equivalency that we can use to get conversion ratios. Okay? So... So what's the equivalency between quarts and pints?
So you're saying that this line is equal to this line. Now the problem here is that these quarks are referring to one liter, right? One liter is 1.0567 quarks, but these pints are equal to a gallon, not equal to a liter. So they told us that one gallon is four, uh, eight. eight pints, or four quarts. One gallon is four quarts, or eight pints. So here's part of what they told us. So what's the equivalency between quarts and pints? It's actually uh, simpler than that. Um, what's the, uh, actually, it's simpler than that. So, well, um, remember that we just want to say how many quarts are equal to how many pints. Well, doesn't this just tell us that four quarts equals eight pints? Mm -hmm. So we don't have to do any division, is what I mean. There's no division. You don't want me to say in one Ah, oh, I see. That's your okay. You could do that, but you don't need to. Just like we didn't have to do any division over here. Remember, there's no rule that says that you have to have a one in your equivalency. There's no rule that says you have to have a one. You could do a division. Uh, if you did, uh, so how could we rewrite this? If you did a division, what would that give you? How could we? The way we? I was trying to say. Yeah. So if you wanted to divide, what would be the new equivalency? So we could divide both sides by four, and then we would get a new equivalency, one quart equals two pints. But we don't need to do that. We could solve the problem just as well, just saying that four quarts equals eight pints. Okay, so what I wanted to say is that if you look at that kind of thing in your textbook, it'll give you a whole bunch of equivalencies. And we can use those equivalencies for doing unit conversion type problems.